how those paid to defend America's skies have changed what they do since September 11th. But at any given moment, an estimated 64,000 Americans are helping defend the nation's skies for free. They're part of a vital volunteer group that had its start looking for and bombing German U-boats during World War II. With the largest fleet of single-engine planes at their disposal, these patriotic patrols are now playing a key role in protecting the homeland from above. CNN's Jonathan Freed reports from New Orleans. Yeah, just right here. If it looks like a typical lawyer's office, file. that's because it is. Didn't we file suit on this? Yes. But Rock uh, Palermo yeah, is not your typical small-town attorney. This member of the Louisiana Bar has an alter ego. As a colonel in the Civil Air Patrol, the civilian auxiliary of the U.S. Air Force. That switch is coming on. Palermo is a pilot and part-time crusader for Homeland Security, where the bar is set for him at 10,000 feet. Palermo is one of 60,000 volunteers across the country who man the Civil Air Patrol's missions, including security reconnaissance flights, disaster relief, and performing 85% of all inland search and rescue operations. All those missions, you know, serve our local communities, and, uh, you know, that's really the, the best reason to join Civil Air Patrol or, or join any organization is to help your fellow man, and Civil Air Patrol enables us to do that. Palermo says the patrol's pilots save an average of 100 lives every year, while also saving money because most missions are flown using small, relatively inexpensive to operate, single-engine planes. Members pay dues and even pay for their own uniforms. We need to opt normal check in uh, one minute. Since September 11th, there's been an increasing emphasis on sorties for Homeland Security. On this flight, our aircraft is acting as a practice target for the military, flying into restricted airspace, triggering a fighter jet intercept. An intercept can happen any time an unauthorized aircraft enters a restricted area. Authorities first try to warn the aircraft away by radio, but if a plane doesn't respond or doesn't comply, that's when the intercept occurs and the plane is escorted out of the area. Entering the no-fly zone, Palermo briefs the crew. We will respond and comply with all our signals. Okay. To protect national security, we're not allowed to tell you how long it takes for the fighters to intercept us, exactly where we are, or even how high we're flying. Target boat, high boat, uh, range relay, two ships, two miles, end trail, end closing. But we can show you what it looks like when the United States Air Force swoops down on you, literally from out of the blue. The fighters order us to rock our wings, the sign for surrendering to an intercepting aircraft. Once they see we've complied, the jets instruct us to leave the airspace. Do you ever pinch yourself and say, I cannot believe that I have the opportunity to do this? Yes, I never would have thought that uh, I would be routinely flying uh, missions in which uh, an F-15 or an F-16 come alongside uh, in formation. Uh, I, and, and it is a unique experience that not many pilots, uh, unless they're in trouble, get to experience. The privilege, though, comes with a price, as some members spend dozens of hours away from home and work every week. How important is your family support to enable you to do this? Oh, very important for all our volunteers, uh, both family support and support from our co-workers uh, when we're, we're called uh, for duty. Uh, many times, um, there's not much notice. The satisfaction is what keeps all of us going. The satisfaction, in, be it a volunteer firefighter on the ground or an emergency manager or another Air Force person saying, job well done, you know, you made our mission or you, you helped us solve a problem is all the things we need. And uh, now I am getting emotional. <laughs> uh, when emotions bubble, Palermo says he draws on the mental discipline he's acquired as a lawyer to stay focused while in uniform. So he's always ready for the next time his country calls. Jonathan Freed, CNN, New Orleans.